What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of News Dose, and, and Hero 31, Sigma was officially revealed for Overwatch, and he looks crazy in a good way. We're going to look at a few of his abilities and test him out, so stay tuned for that. Also, we got a bunch of game-related announcements today, and I'll briefly discuss those as well, but before we get into all that, don't forget to hit the subscribe and bell notification button if you want to keep up to date with all of the latest gaming news. I try to post 3-4 to four times a week, and I pride myself on delivering as much game-related news as I possibly can. So let's take a look at Hero 31 Sigma in Overwatch. He is a barrier tank, and it's something I think Overwatch definitely needs more of. I mean, we got Orisa and Reinhardt, and to a lesser extent we got Winston, but we definitely needed another to change things up just a bit. So I'm really happy about that personally, but Sigma has a pretty complex kit it seems. His, his main weapon, the Hypersphere, is a short burst weapon where he shoots two spheres in rapid succession that implodes. has a small amount of gravitational pull, so that could be interesting to watch and how it can affect the game. But the cool thing here is that the orbs actually they bounce off the wall, so you can do some you can do some pretty cool uh, trick shots and maybe you can bounce things around corners to unexpecting victims. Now we have Junkrat that can kind of spam chokes with his grenades, but Sigma may be able to spam small corridors as well, so so he could be dangerous in small areas. Now granted, the Hypersphere has super short range, so don't expect too much here. I mean, he's not going to replace Junkrat or anything, but it's still something that you can do. He also has Kinetic Grasp as an ability, which allows him to absorb damage and turn it into his own personal shields, which kind of sounds really powerful on paper. Now it is important to note here that it doesn't absorb the effect of the hit, which means that you only absorb the damage itself. So let's say Lucio booped you. Well, you're still going to get knocked back, but you will absorb the damage of it at the same time. I'm not sure which weapons this extends to as of this moment, or if it's just knockback, as I haven't really got to play with him too much, but I'm interested in Ash's burn effect in particular. Regardless, this absorption ability has a lot of potential because not only does it give you extra shields, making you pretty tanky with up to 400 extra health, but it also protects yourself from incoming damage. This is important because Sigma is actually an anchor tank, so he can shoot a shield in front of him. Though the cool thing here is that you can shoot it as far as you need and then call it back whenever you want. Seems like a smaller but more mobile Orisa shield, but a bigger shield than Symmetra's. Meanwhile, Sigma can protect himself even if he shoots his shield far away from him to protect a teammate because he also has Kinetic Grasp as an ability. Now, Jeff did say that they may change this ability some because it may actually be too powerful at release, so let's pay attention to that. And of course, we know the community of Overwatch will definitely be paying attention to that because they'll let us know. So it, it, it also has a pretty long cooldown effect with 15 seconds, so let's keep that in mind as well. Now the shield also can be shot straight up or, or down depending on the situation. Maybe you need to protect an ally that has overextended and is trying to get back to the team. Or maybe you need to break a choke point. It's an ability that could change the game in major ways. His last ability, Accretion, is where he gathers a massive amount of debris and chucks it at an enemy. It does have a knockback effect, though it appears that it is much more dramatic if you're far away from an enemy. Of course, since Sigma's primary fire has such a short range, this may be Sigma's main way of attacking in longer distance fights until he closes in on the enemy, similar to how Reinhardt uses his hammer. It also does look like it has a pretty long startup, so it'll likely be dodged relatively easy, if you're paying attention at the very least. Again, Reinhardt players are probably pretty familiar with this style of gameplay. The last ability, of course, is his ultimate, and it looks really, really good. Of course, I haven't tried this in-game yet, so my mind may change on this, but it traps enemies in a gravitational pull and raises people into the air. Of course, you and your team at this point can pick off easy targets, but for anybody that remains alive, will be hit with an earth-shattering fall which cuts your HP in half. That seems pretty massive and could definitely be a game-changing ult. It however does have a bit of a startup and it has an area of attack similar to Doomfist's ultimate, so, so as of this moment I'm kind of interested in seeing if it's easy to dodge or not in an actual game. 
Like I said, I'll have to test this all out in an actual game a bit more because, you know, I'm just playing up against bots here and, you know, they're not always the best uh, representation of what you can actually do with these abilities. Anyways, that is it for Sigma's abilities and he's looking pretty awesome, or at least in my opinion. What do you guys think though? Are you excited for Sigma? And if you are, let me know in the comments below. He is available on the PTR right now, so go check him out. In other news, Media Molecule is looking to hire some developers to make games in their own game, Dreams. It's like an inception for making games. Dreams, of course, is the game where you can make your wildest dreams come to reality with its absurdly good creation tools. Seriously, if you haven't seen what some people have achieved in this game, you should go check it out because it's, it really is impressive. I mean, people are making new Crash Bandicoot games and Banjo-Kazooie, I mean, it just looks great. This whole hiring developers though, it, it is pretty interesting. Now in the past they talked about wanting to be able to monetize creators content and maybe this will be one way for them to do that without running into legal issues. Hiring talented people within the community, though this particular post seems to be targeting small development teams. If anything, it could ensure some good content for Dreams as I do think that is an issue with these type of games uh, that lets you create things as the main point of the game. Some people just try to make levels as impossible as they can, while others legitimately put effort into making it a fun game. It's not always up to par on what we are used to seeing in professional development games, but there is people that genuinely make some good stuff with the creation tools that they're given. Also, the JRPG Onanaki released a demo today for PC, the Switch, and on PlayStation 4. This is from the creators of Lost Sphere and I Am Setsuna, which was both received with very mixed opinions, and so far the feedback for Onanaki has been similar. That is too bad if that is the case considering their game always looks great from an artistic point of view, uh, it's just they don't always end up being great games uh, for, for some reason or the other. Anyways though, go check out Onanaki if you're interested in it, I know I will at the very least. Now there was two game related announcements today, the first being Two Point Hospital was announced for consoles. The popular PC game where you design hospitals and search for cures to different diseases will be coming to the Xbox, the Nintendo Switch, and PlayStation 4. We don't have a specific release date just yet, but it will be coming in 2019. This is actually a really good game that was critically acclaimed just last year, I believe it has an 83 on Metacritic. and. It's a welcome addition to consoles, so if you haven't played it, go check it out when it releases. The other game announcement was a bit of an odd one being Angry Birds Movie 2 Under Pressure, which is an asymmetrical PlayStation VR title. Angry Birds has certainly taken a different route, first being a game that tied into a movie, and now the movie tying into a game. I'm not really sure if this one will turn out to be great or not, but if you're an Angry Birds fan and you like PlayStation VR, keep an eye out for it. Now the last thing I want to talk about is Yakuza, because there will be a Yakuza conference on August 29th. I'm not sure what kind of news to expect there, but a lot of people are speculating that there might be a new Yakuza game announcement, so it might be a stream worth paying attention to. Anyways, that's it for today's news dose, but let me know what you think in the comments below, and as always, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. Peace out.